everyone. Uh, welcome to our webinar. My name is Carrie Belanger and I'm the editor of SpudSmart Magazine and SpudSmart.com and today I'll be acting as your moderator. Now the whole seed model has been used in Europe for some time and is becoming more popular in the United States. The practice has had low adoption in Canada, however, that may change. Is a whole seed system possible for Canada? We'll be looking into that today as well as exploring the pros and cons of planting whole seed and cut seed pieces. But first, one minute. First, um, I'd like to thank our sponsors, McCain Foods and BASF, for their support. I'd also like to take care of a few housekeeping items at this time. Uh, this webinar is being recorded and will be made available on spudsmart.com following the event. For audio purposes, all microphones have been muted, with the exception of the speakers, but we do welcome your input. If you have a question or comment, please share it in the chat box with us and the other audience members. Uh, today, we have three guest speakers. Sean Bren is co-owner and president of Bren B Farms. Milt Carter is chairman of the board of CSS Farms. And Sean Pelkey is the agronomy manager for McCain Foods Valley Farms. So today, we're going to discuss the pros and cons of planting whole seed and cut seed pieces. Uh, we're going to be discussing whole seed size distribution and seed sizing capabilities. We're going to look at whole seed commercial trial results, as well as next steps for the industry. Please type your questions or your comments into the chat box at, the, at any time during the webinar. We may stop at the end of each guest speaker for a few questions, and there will be an opportunity to ask more questions at the end of the webinar. Our first guest today is Sean Bren. Sean studied ag business and horticulture at the University of Guelph. He is currently the president of Bren B Farms Limited, a fourth generation farm located west of Waterdown, Ontario. Brenby Farms is a diverse farming operation that grows, packs, processes, and ships fresh potatoes to retailers and wholesalers in both Canada and the United States. Currently, Brenby Farms is cropping about 2,000 acres, with 800 to 850 of those acres devoted to potato production. Last year, Brenby Farms grew 21 different potato varieties. Now, please take it away, Sean. Morning, Carrie. Thank you for that. Uh, can everyone hear me okay? Carrie, you can hear me good? You're all good, Sean. Very good. Okay, thanks for the for the introduction. Um, just uh, out of the gate here, uh, a lot of what we do here uh, at and especially in the presentation is going to be experiences that we've seen uh, on the farm. I am by no means a, um, a seed scientist by any stretch, but I'm more than willing and glad to to kind of share some of the experiences that um, that we see here at our farm um, and some of the trials and, and um, lessons that we've learned with cut seed and whole seed over the years. So uh, that being said, we'll uh, we'll kind of jump into the, the presentation here. Uh, so, so first we'll look at some of the, from what we see on the farming side, uh, some of the pros and cons of, of planting whole seed. Um, whole, we've always been a cut seed operation that was just uh, the way that uh, myself and my brother learned from, from uh, our father and we're fourth generation now. That's just kind of the way it has been always here. Um, but in the last few years with different varieties and, and a lot of what I talk about today, it, so much of it is variety dependent. And um, so what we were seeing before were issues with um, seed piece decay and a lot of that happened at the same time that uh, liquid seed, seed piece treatments became available. So uh, some of the advantages that we see right now from, from a whole seed perspective uh, and probably the biggest one is less risk of seed piece decay or, or infections. Without that cut uh, surface exposed, 
the risk is just is much less. Um, furthermore, uh, there's more eyes that uh, that populate stems, so we see increased stem counts. Um, a lot of that has to do with the physiological age of the seed, um, but general rule of thumb, we, we generally see um, more stems per plant on whole seed. Uh, with that, we see uh, increased tuber set, um, which for some people can be a pro and a con, uh, depending what end goal you want for your crop. Um, we see stronger plant vigor. Again, that comes with the physiological age of the seed as well. But general rule of thumb for us with whole seed, we, we do see a bit stronger plant vigor um, with whole seed. Um, the tuber size seems to be a bit more uniform, um, and that primarily uh, be, is because there's a heavier set. But also when you get cut seed, we see the, uh, unless you are um, uh, pre-cutting and, and superizing the seed, which we don't do here, I'll, I'll get into that a little bit later, um, we get a little bit more inconsistency in, in how uniform the emergence is um with cut seed at times and again uh, that can be very variety related um, certainly with whole seed we get a much more accurate seed spacing uh, seed populations are more uniform um, and that ultimately translates into just higher efficiencies um, and then without saying uh, there's much less chance uh, of seed piece blanks when you're dealing with whole seed Looking at some of the challenges uh, to planting whole seed, um, for us, obviously, the, the biggest one is is the cost side of things. Um, you're going to put more hunter weights down per acre. It, it's just the way it is. Um, depending on what varieties you're growing, if there's a, a scarcity in seed, um, you don't always have the luxury of saying, I want uh, one and a half to four ounce seed. Uh, sometimes it's uh, it's two to eight. Um, and if you are going to take eight ounce seed pieces and plant them whole, uh, you can you can double your cost of seed per acre in a quick hurry. So uh, that's probably the biggest one uh, for us is the cost. Um, furthermore, less seed availability or quanti quantity of seed available. So uh, again, certain varieties, there's just limited supplies. Um, and so if you want that variety, uh, and you have to have whole seed, you've got a tough decision to make there. A um, bit more difficult to get good coverage of seed piece treatment on, on a whole seed potato. Um, the, when you cut seed, you, you get a little bit of residual moisture um, from, from the cutting process that uh, helps spread that seed piece treatment, and, and it does give you a, a bit better coverage. Um, so that's... Uh, to me, it's not a, a huge concern, but it is definitely uh, a challenge. Um, more difficult to size and bulk up certain varieties. Um, so if we're looking to, to capture something on a chef market or um, premium poly packs or whatnot, generally those specs from a fresh perspective are, are a stronger size profile. Um, so again, certain varieties tend to, to size up and bulk up, but in trials that we've done with cut seed and whole seed of the same varieties, uh, we get a better size um, profile out of uh, out of cut seed. Uh, and on the other thing too, that we see with whole seed, it does take a little bit longer to to warm the seed up. Um, with cut seed, there's just more surface area, um, and we find that we get uh, the heat into those potatoes uh, quicker. Looking at some of the um, advantages to cut seed, uh, obviously, again, what tend to be um, negatives in, in whole seed can be advantages to the cut side. So, so cost is the big one on the cut seed. So uh, depending on your seed situation, you can manipulate that seed size uh, and seed pieces uh, when you're cutting. You can take uh, a limited seed population or, or, or supply uh, stretch it to cover a few more acres. Uh, ultimately, that does reduce your cost per acre. Uh, you, we will see a bit of a reduction in yield um, doing that sometimes. And again, I hate to, to go back to it, but a lot of these um, notes that I'm making are, are based on varieties that we're growing. Um, 
when you have cut seed piece, there's less eyes, uh, so you don't get the same um, the same stem counts. We generally get a smaller set and uh, a better size profile. Um, again, we talked about this. We will get better coverage of seed piece treatments, whether they are liquid seed piece treatments or just a, a dry powder. That uh, cut surface gives a real nice um, adhesive or uh, layer to for that uh, seed piece treatment to adhere to. Um, the other big advantage on cutting seed is uh, you can look at seed coming in and think that it looks really, really good. Um, it only takes one bad seed piece to, to cause a disaster. So as you're cutting that seed, you can better uh, see some of the internal issues. Uh, we always have staff there that's, uh, that's grading um, anything that we are cutting. Uh, and it gives us a, a second opportunity to pull out something that you may not see originally. Challenges to planting cut seed, and, and, and the big one for us um, is seed piece decay. Uh, so much of this is, in, is environmental. Uh, if we look at the weather forecast out 10, 14 days, and it looks cold and wet, uh, we'll make obvious adjustments to, to our intentions, whether we're going to use liquid or, or a dry seed piece treatment. Um, it's much more difficult to manage the seed uh, post cutting. If you uh, get a freak storm and you get four or five inches of rain, that will shut us down for a good three or four days. Having that cut seed um, in a warehouse is very difficult. Um, further to that, we don't have dedicated storages just for seed piece. So we're in a bit of a, a situation here right now just because we have so many storages that are um, last year's crop removed. Uh, the storages have not been disinfected and cleaned out, and so we're struggling to get space to bring seed in. That's the same for us uh, even after we cut. If, um, if people are in a situation where they're uh, able to cut their seed and um, superize it for a period of time, I am not opposed to that theory at all. Uh, we're just physically not set up here at our farm to, to handle seed like that. So... Um, the environmental conditions are, are a big one. The, we have certain storages that have refrigeration in them to maintain a, a good temperature for that cut seed, but right now those storages still have old crop potatoes in them that we're storing out uh, that are, are here longer than we'd anticipated. So lots of different things for us go into decision-making, which don't always make perfect sense. It's just unfortunately the situation that our, our farm is in. So. Um, with cut seed, we have a cut planter, so our planting speeds are a little bit slower. Uh, if we have big size seed, and, and even after we're cutting it in a two or three piece, or seed, uh, sorry, a two or three cut, some are four, uh, they don't ride the cups as well on the planter. We slow our ground speeds down, turn the shakers down on the planter to make sure that um, we're getting the proper seed distribution, uh, which gives us a little bit um, less efficient we don't get as many acres planted in a day. Um, we do see increased seeds and, and plant escapes um, because if we do cut, we're finding more and more varieties that, um, and again, this is variety specific, that have some type of apical dominancy to them. So you get that first sprout to come out. Um, if you cut it, sometimes that the, the next ones don't always populate as quickly as one would think. Uh, so we, we get a lot more blanks. Again, it, it comes into um, certain varieties. Let's skip over the next one here. So in conclusion, uh, is whole seed better than, than cut seed? I, I, we're, we're leaning more towards whole seed if we can get the varieties that we want and the supplies that we want because the risk factors much less. Um, it really depends on a type of different factors and I've listed a whole bunch here and, and I touched on some of them briefly, but if you don't have the proper building infrastructure, uh, and space to be able to superize your seed. And, uh, I've showed a couple of pictures off to the right here. If you've got something old, you know, old fashioned that has very poor air circulation, you're not going to want to 
uh, cut and treat seed and, and put it in a building and just cross your fingers and hope for the best. There's a lot of money invested in, in these seed potatoes, so you want to make sure you're doing the right job. Uh, again, the weather plays a huge role in how we decide what we're going to do. Um, and if we have the varieties that we want that are whole seed, again, it takes a little bit risk off the table for us. Um, again, I touched on the planting equipment. We use cup planters here, so B-side seed rides in the cups very well. Um, and that's part of the reason that we don't have to put the extra staff on the back to make sure that nothing's getting clogged up or bind in those uh, in those hoppers. Varieties are a big one, like I had mentioned, or Carrie had mentioned before, we grew 21 different acres, or 21 different varieties last year. Um, they're not all huge acre varieties, but um, it gets tough to manage that many different varieties. Target market, um, if you're someone that's, you know, selling uh, majority smalls or creamers, um, you're not going to want huge potatoes. So if you have whole seed and you get a higher set, that might be a, a desired qu quality. For ourselves, we do more on the retail side. We're looking for larger potatoes majority of the time. Um, so that plays a role into sometimes we'll, we'll take a variety and cut it just because of what our target end result is. Uh, soil type plays a big role as well. If you have a, a heavier soil that doesn't drain as well, um, you might want to not think about using cut seed. There's just it's just going to be tougher to to get that crop or that sprout out of the ground. Seed availability, uh, the physiological age of seed. There's uh, there's just so many different factors that uh, that go into this. Uh, we've spent a lot of time over the last four or five years with a research plot on the farm here, looking at different varieties. Uh, the reason we do our research plot is more on a, a variety trial and trying to see something that works good on our farm, not so much comparing the pros and cons of whole seed versus cut seed. If the samples of seed that we get in have some B-size seed in there, we'll plant them at one end of, of that variety plot versus the ones at the other end that are cut. Uh, and we can gauge some results that way, but we don't have the availability to do that on, um, on all of our uh, our varieties that are in our test plot. So that kind of sums it up uh, for us here on on uh, on our our I guess my impression of what works for us. It's very farm farm specific. It's variety specific, and uh, I think you need to do your research, un understand the varieties that you're working with, and make the decisions that best fit uh, each individual farm. And I'll leave it at that. Uh, Carrie? Well, thank you so much, Sean, for that excellent presentation. Um, I have a question for you. Uh, where did you start? What were the first steps when you decided to switch to planting whole seed of some varieties on your farm? It was um, probably about five years ago where we um, had a field that we, it was when liquid seed piece treatments came out and we had a really, really poor stand. As we started going through the field and checking to see what was going on, everything that had broken down was cut seed. It was a variety that just did not like liquid seed piece treatment. Um, when we did find a good seed piece, it was whole. So that was the start of why we really started pushing towards um, whole size seed. And then it's just evolved from there into pros and cons of, of both cut and and uh, whole seeds. So moving forward, I think we'll we'll try to source as much whole seed as we can. Um, but then again, there's going to be certain varieties that we just know it's not as big of an issue. Thank you. I've got a couple more questions for you. Um, this is from the chat. Who is buying for seed in a duck mixing or size, or do you treat them? Sorry, that was really broken up, Carrie. Can you repeat that? Right. Sorry about that. Um, do you size your seed and adjust spacing according to size, or do you request request pre-sized seed, or can you even get that? Yeah, so we, we requ request pre-sized seed if it's available. If it means not getting a variety, then obviously we'll take the varieties that we want and deal with the seed here. 
Um, depending on what the uh, uniformity of the size looks like, if it's a real mixed bag, yes, we will pre-size seed and try and strip the bees out and handle them separately from, from the larger stuff that we'll cut. Thanks, Sean. One more here. Um, let's see here. For whole seed, do you segregate into various whole seed sizes? I think we covered that bit. Um, but this part, do some sizes seem to set or act differently? Sorry, say that one more time. Some sizes of seed seem to set or act differently. Um, I, I don't find that. Um, if it's cut versus whole, yes, but just different sizes of whole seed. Um, again, it's more variety related. If the more eyes that all um, produce a stem at the same time will influence uh, a size profile. A variety that has less eyes is going to set less uh, stems and ultimately probably give you a, a larger size profile tuber. Thank you so much, Sean. I appreciate it. Uh, stick around because we might have some more questions for you at the end. Um, in the next segment, our guest is Milt Carter. Milt has been passionate about growing potatoes for more than three decades. His company, CSS Farms, grows chip, table, seed, and specialty potatoes across 13 U.S. states. Almost 20 years ago, CSS Farms developed a vertically integrated seed supply chain with isolated seed farms and a state-of-the-art mini tuber greenhouse. Milt's extensive knowledge on planting whole seed comes from years of production experience. Milt, the floor is yours. Thank you, Carrie. Yeah, can you confirm that you can hear me all right? Hi, Milt. You're coming through just fine. Okay, thank you. Well, I'll start out uh, uh, by giving you a little bit of background information on CSS Farms and Tasteful Selections, as well as myself. Um, so I, uh, along with a couple of Spivak, uh, Brothers started uh, CSS Farms back in 1986, uh, so this is our 33rd year. Um, and then we uh, did a partnership with RPE and started Tasteful Selections in 2010, and that's a baby potato business that's based in Bakersfield, California. So our business is divided into four categories. We have uh, we grow chip potatoes in six locations across four states. Uh, we grow baby potatoes in nine locations across three states, California, uh, Arizona, and Nevada. We grow uh, seed potatoes across in six locations in five states, and that they include Wisconsin, Nebraska, Colorado, Idaho, and Oregon. Um, and uh, uh, the Colorado location is a mini tuber facility. And in the Pacific uh, Northwest in the tri-states, we do onions plus chip and fried potatoes. Uh, our total footprint is roughly 25,000 acres of potatoes, 1,500 acres of onions, and you know 10,000 plus acres of other crops. Um, as Carrie mentioned earlier, we're vertically integrated in seed. So we start out with a tissue culture lab and mini tuber facility in Colorado, uh, where we utilize uh, nutrient film technology to produce the mini tubers. And then we have early generation seed farms in Nebraska and Wisconsin and later generation seed farms in uh, another location in Nebraska, plus locations in Idaho and Oregon. Um, so relative to whole seed, uh, uh, Eric, Al Eric Allen with Cambridge University Farm in England is the guy who kind of got me started down the road of, uh, or got CSS started down the road of, of looking hard at whole seed. Uh, being from England, he was used to that system over there and, and really thought there were areas where it would provide benefits uh, to CSS farms and to other growers uh, in North America. Uh, certainly uh, the biggest advantages probably come with varieties, um, you know, yellow and red and, and chip varieties 
as opposed to maybe the traditional russet Burbank for French fries. But uh, in any case, uh, one of the biggest adopters in the United States is a big russet Burbank grower for French fries. So, and the reason is, is that what we've seen in our operations and they've seen as well is that if you do everything right, you can increase the revenue per acre generated by using whole seed uh, versus uh, a cut seed. And by that, I mean revenue per acre on an adjusted basis where you subtract out the cost of the uh, seed that you're using. Um, and a lot of that is because it allows you to maximize your incentives related to tuber size. So frequently, for example, on French fry contracts, there's uh, incentives related to greater than six ounce um, and also incentives related to bruise free. And by having the right uh, having the bulk of your production in the right size category, you can do a better job of maximizing those incentives. And especially in the French fry industry, uh, whether you make a profit or not depends upon whether you maximize those incentives. Just the base price of the contract uh, um, doesn't allow you to make any money. Um, the reason that you can do this is by when you use whole seed, you can generate a more predictable number of stems per acre, which in turn allows you to uh, produce a more predictable number of tubers per acre. And basically, if you do enough research, you can define that for a particular contract in a particular region where uh, you've got a, a particular uh, reasonable yield target, uh, there is a tuber population or a close range of tuber populations that'll maximize the value of the crop. And, uh, and by using whole seed, you can get closer to that target. Um, so part of the reason is, in addition, is that you get better plant spacing uniformity with fewer skips and doubles, like uh, uh, the previous speaker discussed, less seed piece decay, uh, where you're missing plants or have weak plants. And another huge advantage for whole seed is if for some reason you had a significant disease problem, of course, ring rot would be the worst one, you get significantly less spread um, when you plant a whole seed versus when you cut it. The other thing that you get out of whole seed is a more uniform emergence. Uh, and this is somewhat, uh, most people wouldn't think that because when they plant, they see whole seed and cut seed planted side by side. Uh, they frequently see the, the cut seed come up quicker and that's generally is the case. But if you look at it closely, uh, the period for emergence on the whole seed is much fewer days than it is on the cut seed. And so you've got a, a, a crop out there that all emerged at very close to the same time, it's easier to manage the crop. It's easier to figure out when to uh, kill the crop to achieve a certain size profile. And when you do all of that, you can maximize your adjusted gross revenue per acre. The other big advantage of whole seed is it eliminates the expense and the time required for cutting. Um, and uh, that's a pretty big deal on our farms. Once we've uh, converted them to whole seed, you know, they would fight you tooth and nail if you wanted to convert them back to cutting. Um, another thing is it frequently reduces the need for seed treatments. If you're not cutting the seed, if you don't have any disease issues on the seed or disease issues in your ground, uh, we frequently plant a high percentage of our acres with no seed treatment at all. Um, and just the out-of-pocket savings on not cutting seed can be a buck and a half to two dollars per hundredweight pretty easily. Some of the other advantages of, of whole seed um, is that you can usually plant a little faster uh, because the and, and the main reason is is that with whole seed it tends to the role of the whole seed in the seed furrow as, as you're planting is more uniform. And so you can go a little faster without uh, hurting your plant spacing uh, uniformity. Um, of course, depending upon what planter you have, you're still limited uh, on being able to effectively fill your cups or whatever it is you're using to plant with. 
Um, the other thing that, that people, a lot of people don't understand is that you can plant smaller seed pieces, save seed pieces in the one to one and a half ounce category and get a really good crop with them. Um, if they're planted separately from the bigger size seed pieces, whereas if you were just planting one and one to one and a half ounce cut seed, typically those are slivers that don't perform very well. Whereas in the whole seed, they'll perform well. And when you separate that out, you can actually plant significantly less hundred weights per acre of that smaller seed and still get the same crop. I know of one grower that plants you know, where they're planting 18 bags to the acre. Normally, uh, with the bigger seed, they're down to planting as little as 12 bags per acre to get the same yield with the smaller seed. So it can be a pretty big advantage. Of course, as with anything, there's always challenges. <laughs> and uh, some of the challenges with whole seed are that you need to size and plant those sizes separate in, in order to really maximize value. And I would argue that you need to divide your whole seed into two or more size categories. Uh, in Europe, they tend to divide things into 10 millimeter increments, uh, frequently 25 to 35, 35 to 45, and 45 to 55. Um, for growers in the United States that are not used to that, uh, that can create some real logistical challenges for trucking and storage. And it also depends a lot on how big of an operation you are and how many different varieties you are. Um, I know of at least one major grower in the United States where they've only got three or four varieties and they're planting thousands of acres. It's pretty easy for them to uh, accomplish this logistically. Whereas if you're a smaller grower, um, like the previous speaker, and you're planting 21 different varieties, uh, trying to split those into different sizes would be a big challenge. Um, a second big challenge that we run into is that on the russet type varieties that are elongated, that sizing them is really difficult, especially if the grower, the commercial grower is gonna wanna use a cup planter to plant them with, uh, because a lot of times when you size them with the typical equipment um, where you're sizing them by diameter, you'll end up with a lot of tubers that are too long and create problems in the cup planters. Um, one of the things we're doing is switching to belt type planters uh, to deal with this issue. And I think that long-term that's a way the industry may have to go to the extent that growers switch to uh, planting a higher percentage of whole seed. Um, the other big challenge uh, for whole seed in, uh, in North America is that uh, it, producing whole seed with low setting varieties is difficult and expensive, uh, somewhat like the previous speaker said. And, and over time, Europe has tended to select for high set because they had a whole seed system whereas the United States has tended, or North America has tended to select in their breeding for low set in general, and uh, because they were cutting the seed and, and, uh, and that, uh, that makes it difficult. Uh, if you've got a variety that's only gonna set five or six tubers versus one that's gonna set 15 or 20. So that's uh, the challenges of whole seed. Um, a few other challenges on whole seed is if for the seed grower, um, you know, you really, if you're gonna try and produce mostly whole seed, uh, you're gonna end up with a fair amount of that seed in the smaller size category that you're gonna wanna try and capture. And uh, in order to do that, you really need to be growing on sandier ground, otherwise you bring half the, half the farm to the storage with you. Um, the other thing is, is that for the commercial grower, you know, if you're going to plant two different sizes of whole seed, you're, you're going to need to space them differently. And uh, of course, some operations, uh, you know, handling that complexity is not something they want to do. Um, and then finally, um, you, you need to have an outlet for the seed that's greater than 55 millimeters. Um, which is kind of usually the top end for what you want to plant as whole seed. And 
and you either got to either got to cut that seed or decide you're going to plant it uh, or you have to be able to sell it to an alternative market. So those are those are some of the things that we're contending with. Um, just finally, uh, where whole seed works the best is with varieties that are high setting, uh, varieties that are susceptible to seed piece decay, uh, varieties that have fewer eyes so that you would end up with either more blind seed pieces or frequently those same varieties tend to have uh, uh, butt ends that are, uh, or stem end, I guess it would be, stem ends that are more dormant when you cut them and they don't come up for a long time. And then finally, it works better with varieties that have a round shape versus the elongated shape just because it's easier to size them accurately. Um, it also works better if you've got markets that are paying a big premium uh, for a desired size range and or size uniformity. And uh, for example, in our operations for our baby potato business with tasteful selections, you know, it's all about that. Um, and even in the French fry industry, and even more so now recently in the chip industry, um, the the processes are seeing some real value on size uniformity. And typically with whole seed, because you're going to get more uniform emergence, you're going to be starting out with more uniform seed, you're going to get the right tuber population. The shape of the size curve is going to be a lot tighter instead of spread out and so it just works better so that's um that's what i have um and open to any questions or whatever else you want to do well thank you milt so much for that excellent presentation uh there are a couple questions here that we could address right now um first question is do you feel you've been able to adopt planting whole seed more readily because of your vertical integration? Uh, yeah, I'm sure that is the case. Um, and, and also maybe the size as well, because what we've done frequently is we'll send, you know, we, we'd like to produce, you know, our targets are like maybe be able to produce 75 or 85 percent of the crop being uh, whole seed size. Uh, but sometimes that doesn't work out that way. You get down closer to 50 or 60 percent. But in any case, what we'll do is we'll send all whole seed to one farm uh, so that they don't have to be don't have to have cutting equipment or be set up to do that and send send the other seed to a farm that is set up to do cutting. Um, the other thing is, is in order to produce a high percentage of whole seed, You've got to start out with a lot more mini tubers in, in the lab and then uh, higher planting rates for field year one and field year two. And since we're vertically integrated and our own customer, yeah, that's definitely made it easier. Okay, Milt, there's another question. How do you see seed storage and seed readiness? Uh, practices changing in the future in order to optimize seed, for example, set stand maturity date, will there be more and more smaller seed lots to manage? Um, not sure about the last part of the question, but uh, certainly we've, uh, we've, all of our seed production facilities, of course, we're a little, more southern location than your uh, growers there in Canada, but we have all of our seed storages are air conditioned. And so we're able to uh, manage the temperatures and storage uh, fairly precisely. And so we can manage our physiological and age. Um, and uh, that's fairly critical um, to getting the maximum yield and, and revenue per acre. Um, we have not gone to sizing going into storage in the fall. Uh, instead, we're doing that sizing coming out uh, in the spring. Um, but that certainly requires, you know, substantially more facilities uh, for doing the sizing and holding the size seed um, until you're ready to ship it. And then we also have in our operations 
gone to more smaller bins um, so that we can, you know, at times we have to save a particular size and put it back into storage. So I'm not, hopefully that answers the question. Thanks so much, Milt. Uh, we've got another question for you, but we'll we'll get back to that one at the end of the presentations. Um, right now, our final guest is Sean Pelkey. Uh, Sean has been working in the potato industry since 2007. Uh, he's been focusing mainly on the seed sector. Sean started with McCain Foods in 2017 and is concentrating on implementing new agronomy practices and technologies to increase quality and yields for processing on the McCain corporate farm in New Brunswick. After spending the first 10 years of his career in the seed sector, Sean understands the importance quality seed can play in producing a high quality, high yielding crop. Although he admits there is no silver bullet when it comes to management practices for increasing yield, he says whole seed can be a big win management practice moving forward as the advantages outweigh the challenges. He believes this is an important step to moving the industry forward. So uh, please take it away, Sean. Um, so just to give a quick introduction on what I'm going to present uh, this afternoon is I'm going to talk about some of the challenges and advantages. Some of them will be similar to what Milt and Sean mentioned during their presentation, but this will give you a feel for what we're seeing from the McCain food side. And then I want to look at some of the whole seed size distributions um, and kind of how we handle it. Uh, look at our plant evaluations, emergence versus whole versus cut. Similar to milk, we are seeing uh, a difference there. Um, looking at our stand and stem count numbers, one thing you'll, I'll talk about a lot today is, is stem count and tuber populations. Um, so. Uh, that's kind of how we're judging our, our our population and how we can kind of maximize our yields. And then I will finalize with some of our Valley Farm whole seed results for 2018. Sorry, got to go the other way here. So basically, the major advantage that we that we're seeing is it just simplifies management. Um, you know, this is this to me this is huge, huge, and it's sometimes often overlooked. Um, but there's less handling by the end user. When you receive your seed, you basically put it on the you put it on the floor, and you're not moving it again until it's time to go plant. You're not picking it up to cut, putting it back down if you're pre-cutting, and then moving it to the field. You reduce the cost of seed cutting. Again, that could be anywhere from two to three dollars, depending. And you reduce the seed waste. So, depending on the, the variation in your mother's seed size, if it's, if it's very wide range, you go. You can only set the cutter up to to optimize so much. So with with a very large range of mother seed, you're going to end up with more waste. Depending on the variety, we see anywhere from two to five percent uh, of waste. So that to me is, is a real big one, simplifying management. And I think Sean mentioned it as well earlier that you know if if you are if you do get a big rain event and you got to stop and start planting, you don't have seed that is sitting in a warm truck for multiple days. Um, so that's so that's a big bonus. Um, another one that's off, often not always thought about is it economizes transport costs. So especially if the seed is sized correctly, the smaller seed can be shipped farthest to the farthest destination, depending if, if they're happy with that seed size profile. And you can keep some of the larger seeds and can keep it closer. Um, a big one that we see here uh, at Valley Farms is really increased planter accuracy, and I'll touch on some of our some of our work that we do with that uh, in a couple slides. Um, we also the reduced odds of seed infections by plant pathogen, very important. Uh, we also see better achieved plant stand, a more uniform size and stem numbers. Um, Bill touched on this a little bit as well, and that's something that we're really starting to look, look at. We're not looking at plants per acre, we're looking at stems per acre and tubers per acre to help drive our yield numbers. And again, the big one, Everyone wants to increase yield, and, and uh, we feel that if done correctly with the proper management practices, that we should be able to increase our yield by at least ten uh, percent. But again, there are challenges, and it is a total shift from our current seed production system here in the east. Um, you know, currently our our seed is grown for weight, uh, not tuber numbers, and we basically purchase based off weight, not tuber numbers either. 
So to change that, um, again, we would need more minis um, at the greenhouse level um, to, to help get that tuber population higher and then also the first couple of years in the field. So currently there's not much bed planting going on in this area. Uh, it's more traditional traditional rows, 34, mostly 36 inch. So we, we have trouble with keeping our size profile down. And there's just there's just not much seed availability in this area that's actually being grown for whole seed. A lot of the seed that we have for whole seed currently is being stripped out of, um, of regular seed and say whether 48 mil and below is kind of what we're using. So, so we don't have a lot of seed being grown for whole seed yet. Um, currently, you know, there is an increase in seed prices. So when we do purchase whole seed, we're looking at around a $3 hundred weight uh, increase for seed. Um, that is that is whole. But when you do factor in the seed cutting cost and the no waste, uh, those basically wash each other out. Uh, infrastructure, um, you know, currently we have very large old storages here with that are single bin. We don't have a lot of small multi bin refrigerated storages that you can move seed in and handle them differently. And size and capabilities, a really a really big one. Um, we need to be able to size our seed into into ten mil increments. Um, you know, whether it's uh, 25 to 35 or 35 to 45 or 45 to 55, we want to have that capability so we can plant the right size seed at the correct spacing. And we are currently seeing some delayed emergence. And in our short growing season here in the east, um, you know, we really want to, uh, to get the crop coming through the ground as quickly as possible to maximize the uh, the plant size at, at tuber initiation. We feel, you know, if we can maximize that, at that time, that will that will increase tumor numbers and also our size profile. Uh, so now, looking at Valley Farms, which I mentioned is a corporate farm here in New Brunswick for for McCain Foods, uh, we had so we had a hundred just under 182 acres of RV whole seed in 2018. So we got that from two different seed sources. Um, one seed source supplied us a little over 40 acres and. We space those at 17 inches. I'll go into more detail on that. Um, seed source two was uh, our major seed source, which is a little over 140 acres. That seed was a little bit larger. It averaged 2.2.3 ounces of size compared to the seed source one, which averaged 1.5. That's why we we had to kind of play with our spacing a little bit. And then we also had a little bit of shepherdy whole seed, um, just under 11 acres, and uh, we spaced that at 11 inches compared to 10 inches for for a conventional cut. So the first thing we did when we received the seed source um, was we wanted to get a try to get as accurately as randomly as possible get um, get some samples so we had a good idea of what our seed size profile was. So basically, what you see from these two tables is each one of these colors is a different is a different sample. Um, again, as randomly as possible, we we took fifty pounds from from the seed lot. Um, got them sized uh, by weight and by count, and you'll see from the four different samples they were very they were very uniform. We we basically had three sizes. We had 28 to 35, you know, a little under 20 percent. 36 to 55 was the main one, right around 70 percent, and 46 to 55 was was the third size, a little bit larger. So based off of that, and based off of you know talking about stem numbers and tuber numbers, ideally we would be able to plant those three sizes at three different spacings because we feel we would get different stem numbers at each one of these different sizes. But currently not having the size and capabilities that we would we would like, we had to plant all three of these sizes at one spacing. So we based that off of the, the average which was 36 to 45 and that's how we determined 17 inches. Um, to do our to do our spacing. The same thing for for Russet Burbank seed source two and our Shepherd. You'll see instead of having three three sizes, we basically had two sizes. Um, you know, which were were almost identical, both 50-50 So thirty six to forty five and forty six to fifty five. This averaged two point three ounces. Um, and then the whole seed Shepherd was again two sizes. It was a little bit larger seed than the Burbank. Um, and it averaged 2.6 ounces. But again, in a perfect world, we would have been able to plant these two 
these two sizes at two different spacings. But currently, we had to use a, our best guess of what we were going to get for stem numbers based off of these two size profiles, and they were all planted at, at the same spacing. Uh, we also do a tremendous amount of planter evaluations um, during the planting season. We really want to know how our planters are working um, throughout. Um, you know, so these are the 10 different things that we look for um, when we're doing our spacing. So you, here we looked at we looked at the whole seed source one, and seed source two, and then our two cut seed sources as well. And anything here with, with the red table around, you can really see across the board that our planters just work better when we're planting whole seed. Um, the coefficient of variation or the variation in our in our in what we saw for seed spacing was much lower with um, with the whole seed versus the versus the cut. We had less skips, we had less doubles. Our per, our percent that we feel is in the acceptable range, which is plus minus of our intended spacing, was higher with with whole seed versus cut. And then our percent in the lower limit was lower and our percent in the higher limit was lower as well. So basically across the board, and this is on a year to year basis, we definitely see that our planters work better with whole seed versus cut. Um, looking at a little bit of our emergence, because like I mentioned earlier, we, we do have, we do see that our cut seed does come to the ground a little bit quicker. So here on June 25th, 45 days after planting, we have cut on the left and hole on the right. And you can see these were planted the same day. You can see that the cut seed is a little further ahead. We looked at July 3rd, 53 days after planting. Um, you can still kind of see the, you can still kind of see the same thing. The cut seed is continuing to be a little bit up ahead of the cut. But when you look at it through, through this imagery, which is NPI and RGB, the drone imagery that we take, um, of our, of all our fields, um, on the left hand side, July 10th, 60 days after planting, you can see the green is cut seed and the red is whole seed. So if it wasn't that visual in the slide before, just by the eye, you can see that there's a distinct line right down through the field where we move from whole seed to cut seed. Same thing with RGB, you can just kind of see a darker green compared to uh, the lighter green where we had the whole seed. But now if we move if we move along, if we move to July 31st, so 81 days after planting, that the difference went away. You're you're not seeing you're not seeing that difference um, in canopy anymore. Um, the whole seed has caught up to to the cut seed. But it's like, as I mentioned, in our short growing season in the east, what we want to do is we want to maximize time it takes to get to 100% ground cover um, in our crop. And, by, and currently, we see that we can see we can get to 100% ground cover quicker with cut seed. But as Bill mentioned, what we do see with cut versus whole is the whole seed comes through the ground much more uniform, much more evenly with the cut seed does have a lot more variation and you can have plants that are 12 inches um, beside plants that are barely just coming through and that's obviously going to affect your size profile. Um, we also wanted to look at the standard stem count numbers for, for whole seed versus cut again. We really want to be able to control our stem numbers um, and by doing that, we feel whole, that's where one of the big, big advantages are. But the big thing I want you to look at here is the number of gaps and the number of doubles um, that we found, which would have happened at planting when we were back out and did, and did our stand counts, was the cut C1 and cut C2 had three times as many gaps as, as the whole seed. And with doubles, the cut seed, both cut seed on the outside, had more doubles than, than the whole seed. Again, this is going to affect your plant stand and it's going to affect your tuber, tuber size profiling and your overall yield. So now looking at uh, some of our trial work. So just to give you an idea how we kind of break out our trials. So basically, um, if you look at this, this table, we have our control is in blue and our treatment would be um, in red. And if we have a six-year-old planter, we basically randomly go into the field 50 paces. We would then do 10 foot digs. We want to get make sure we got at least one dig from each planter roll. 
and we want to keep our digs as close to each other as possible to try to limit as much field variability as possible. Especially here in the east, our fields have a tremendous amount of, of, uh, of soil variability. Um, so it's, it's important for us to try to limit that as much as possible. Um, you know, all of our trials see the same amount of fertilizers. You know, we, we kept the planting date the same. Um, we use a strip trial design. Um, for a whole seed trial, we would do 12 10 foots in both the control and the treatment, and we would grade the samples according to the criteria of the main plant. So here's kind of a, what we kind of grade for. Um, there's many different things here that uh, that you can see, but anything in red would be would be significantly different. So basically, what you can see here is that for this one trial, our actual our cut seed. Um, you know, was significantly higher than our whole seed number two as far as yield goes. But when you look at crop value, um, cut seed was, was higher as well. And we can kind of look at a lot of different things why why that is. And it, and it, it, it always comes down to the crop value when you talk to different growers. They want to want to try to maximize crop value and pay the yields. And we know that by not by not being able to plant our different whole seed. In, in different um, spacings due to it all being sized together, that limited us our potential to, to maximize our stem and our plant numbers. So in our whole C2, you'll see had more smalls um, and it had less 10 ounce. Again, it was quite a bit larger, it averaged 2.3 ounces. Um, so there was more stems, um, there was more tubers, so there was, so there was, we ended up having less less 10 ounce and more small because of the larger seed. Moving forward, you know, knowing that, and we know our seed is going to be around that same size next year, we can adjust our our, our spacing to, to hopefully drive our 10 ounce and our up and our small down to, to maximize the yield and the crop value. Uh, this is our second trial, and this just compared the same seed source, uh, whole versus cut. You'll see here, uh, again, anything in red is significantly different, but we were actually we were a little bit higher in our crop value, plus 45 with with the whole seed versus the cut seed. And in this trial, we were actually able to decrease our our smalls and increase our our 10 ounce almost double, and our tuber size, our average tuber weight went up from 4.6 to 5.3, which was significant. So this one is actually a positive a positive outlook. So basically, just the conclusion and, and next steps for for what we want to do at McCain's and at Valley Farms is is that you know we definitely achieve better plant your accuracy with whole seed compared to cut. It's to, to us, it's, it's a no brainer. Um, we see it we see it every planter evaluation we do. Um, it's it's just that's a big win for us. Um, we do observe more uniform emergence and plant stand with whole seed. Um, not as fast, like you said, it, they don't come up through the ground as fast as the cut seed. By cutting the seed, you're breaking the dormant seed, um, which they do come up. And usually our, our cut seed is a little bit larger than the whole seed as well. So again, um, less less area for it to travel to, to come through the hill. Um, so, that, so that is, you know, right now, we would like to be able to get our, our whole seed to, to come through the ground a little bit quicker, whether or not we play with our planting depths or look at different sprouting options currently. Um, Starting option is a challenge for us because we're limited to our storage facility as well. Um, you know, uh, but there's definitely a clear trend of increased tumors for plants, stems for plant, and tumors per stem with Ruth and Burbank when we're looking at whole seed versus cut seed. Again, that's a that's a big win for us. Um, for this trial, we did not achieve the anticipated stem numbers for seed force one or seed force two, so that that would affect our, our overall yield and our our, uh, our tuber numbers. So again, moving forward, um, you know, each year we're gaining more knowledge about how to handle whole seeds. This is a new concept to us a couple of years ago, but each year we're gaining more and more and more knowledge about how to how to handle it. And because again, we, we saw that we can do either one, increase yield or um, increase tuber numbers, but we haven't been able to do both yet. And so those are still management practices that we're trying to um, that we're trying to implement because we want to be able to manage them both. We feel we will get there, and you know, this year we're looking to conduct more trials on whole seed. We have again the same seed sources coming in for for this year. 
um, knowing what we know now, we can play around with our spacing um, to, to try to get both uh, tuber size and number of tubers in a correct order. So, so again, we are maximizing our yield and we're able to um, kind of drive the industry forward a little bit here in the East. So I think that's basically it um, for my presentation. Well, thank you so much, Sean. That was a great presentation. Uh, there's a couple questions here already for you. Um, this one is from uh, Ryan Barrett. Our research in PEI has shown a value in planting 1.5 to 2.5 ounce um, Russet Burbank at 15 inches and 2.5 to 4 ounces Russet Burbank at 18 inches. Have you done similar trials? So basically, this is the first year that we actually did some, we looked at spacing. Um, in previous years, we would have planted our whole seed and our cut seed at the same spacing. Um, but after what we got in 2017 trials, we realized that, yeah, our yields were great, but our tuber, our tuber size was a lot smaller than, than we would, would like. Our 10 ounce was really sacrificed. So this year, like I mentioned, our 1.5 ounce seed was planted at 17. And our 2.3 ounce was planted at 18. Looking at those results and seeing that our 1.5 ounce only averaged about 2.5 stems, where our 2.3 ounce averaged almost four stems. If we were to get those two sizes again, I would tighten up our our 1.5 ounce maybe to, maybe to 16, depending. Um, and I would look at even uh, opening up our 2.3 ounce. It was at 18. Uh, I would say we could go even wider uh, than that to maximize our size. Thanks so much, Sean. Um, when you compared the cut seed to the whole seed, was the cut seed treated? Yes, um, both cut and whole was treated. Thank you. And did you try to increase tuberization with ethylene? No, we have not done any, any of that work. Thank you. Um, Sean, I have a couple more questions for you. Um, because it involves a complete shift from our current seed production system, do you believe our industry can and will shift from cut seed to more whole seed or, uh, as we've talked about before, minimally cut seed in the future? Yeah, that's, that's kind of what I like, like to say. And sometimes I got to catch myself when I talk about whole seed and cut seed because, you know, even as Bill mentioned, they're, they're shooting for around 70% of whole seed. And if, if we could get to that point where, you know, we were able to, um, receive 70% of our seed hole, um, you know, that would be a real benefit. We could we could handle the remaining 30%. As far as where we are today, I think, you know, we're, we're very early in this process. And I know here in the East, it's, you know, a lot of the growers are, are still looking at the canes to, to prove this concept. And I think we're, we're moving in that direction. Um, you know, each year we're, we're more prepared to, to move this forward and, and to change our management practices to try to to try to maximize again yield and size so that's kind of where we're going and, and we're going to continue to, to look at these trials and it's, it's a big one for McCain Foods um, in this area and uh, it's something that you know we want to we think can be beneficial to the growers and, and you know I think it can be beneficial to the industry as well um, moving forward. Thank you. Uh, here's another question for you, Sean. Did you store the harvested tubers separately? If so, was there any difference in uh, in storage quality? Uh, no, both both of our seed sources, as far as I uh, am aware, stored their whole and uh, the cut seed uh, the same. We don't store, we, we receive our seed all off site uh, and just either cut or plant uh, in, the, in the spring. Thank you, Sean. Um, I'm just going to circle back now to a couple questions that we uh, had previously for Sean Bren and Milt Carter. Uh, first, Sean Bren, um, I'll just ask you a couple questions. Did you ever green sprout specific varieties? If so, what varieties? No, we've never, we've never, uh, Taking up the practice of green sprouting, not intentionally, anyways. Um, Sean, do you breed into different whole seed sizes and plant them differently? For example, one and a half to two and a half ounces, or two and a half to three and a half ounces. 
Um, yes, it, it really depends on what the seed lot looks like coming in. If there's a very small percentage, we probably won't make the effort. Um, if it's a fairly uniform split where we, you know, would get 50-50 or a 60-40 and we see value in doing that, we would definitely split it out. Thank you. And uh, Mil, I just want to finish up a couple of questions with you as well. Uh, what sizing capabilities can the CSS seed farm provide? Uh, you know, sort of what size increments uh, can your company offer? Generally, uh, we're trying to do what we call small bees and big bees, and we can determine based upon the customer's needs where to split those. Uh, but typically, we're probably at that about that 48 millimeter to split between small, small and big. And then depending upon um, the variety and the customer, um, you know, they may not want anything below 35. Um, and so that's kind of where we're at. OK, uh, one other question we had from the audience is, have you done trials with true potato seed, you know, such as uh, that is being developed in the Netherlands? Uh, we have not uh, done trials with it. We're kind of keeping an eye on it, but we haven't done trials. Excellent. Um, well, that appears to be all the time we have today. Uh, now, but before we let you all go, uh, first, are there any other comments from our speakers? Uh, maybe Sean, uh, Bren, we can start with you. Do you have any last comments? No, no, I enjoyed listening to all the speakers and uh, uh, as much as I found a lot of similarities, which I was expecting, I also uh, learned quite a bit as well. So uh, glad to be a part of the experience. Thank you so much. And Milt, any final words for our audience? Uh, just uh, glad to see that McCain has taken a, a good hard look at uh, at the whole seed option. And, and it looks like they're doing a lot of good research on that. So uh, um, it'll be interesting to follow that and see how it works. Thank you. And what about you, Sean Pelkey? Any last thoughts? Um, well, I guess, you know, I just want to again thank Gary, you, and uh, Bud Smart for, um, for asking me to speak today. And you always learn something. And, and uh, it was great listening to what Milt and, and Sean had to say as far as their experience on, on their farm. And I think, you know, you know, CSS is definitely, you know, in the U.S. is kind of leading the way. It's, it's moving towards a a whole seed system and, and uh, you know we think that we can really look at that here in the east as well so we think there's a lot of opportunity there and, and uh, you know a lot of advantages so we're looking forward to seeing where we are in five years. Thank you so much Sean. Uh, well I'd like to thank our guest speakers for sharing their insights and expertise during this uh, Spud Smart webinar on planting whole seed and cut seed pieces. Sorry about that audience we have a bit of feedback there. Uh, I'd also like to support, or sorry, to thank our sponsors today, uh, BASF and McCain Foods. Um, I'd also like to express my gratitude to the technical team here we have at SpudSmart, Teresa Kurjewitz and Kyle Drotwani. Um, and just a reminder that this webinar will be available on spudsmart.com if you would like to view it again or listen to our what our speakers had to say again. And um, on behalf of the team at SpudSmart, I'd like to thank you all for participating today. And I hope you go on to have a fabulous day. Um, thanks so much and take care.